Hi guys, I figured I'd do a video today. I've been talking about flint napping for a while. And uh, I figured I'd do a, a basic video on, on the stuff you need to get started. You know, you, you really don't need a lot to actually get started in flint napping. Um, so let me lay out some of this stuff and I'll show you what it is and what it's kind of used for. Okay guys, so I'm back. So uh, I wanted to go over some of the tools it takes to uh, a flint nap to begin. Um, nothing serious. Um, one of the first things you need if you're going to start flint napping and uh, it's pretty basic is, is usually a couple pieces of leather and what you do with the leather is you put them over your leg like so and what it does is when you're when you're napping a rock uh, of any kind usually a bigger rock than that. You can lay it on here and you can use it to, to pad your, the leather's there to pad your uh, leg so that you don't accidentally cut your leg or something. Another thing that people you wear usually use is gloves. And uh, I don't even have a pair here because I hardly ever wear my gloves. Not that you shouldn't because gloves are pretty important. And then after that, you really only, to get started, you really only need a couple things. Um, and I have an array of them that I use, and they are, let me get a close-up on them, and they are uh, pressure flakers, and they make these in many different forms. This one's a, one that was made and given to me, and it's got a black plastic handle and a copper point, and then I have this one. I use it for notching. It's got a wooden handle and it's got a steel point on the end of it, which I usually keep that needle point sharp. And then here's some homemade ones that I've made, and they're all they are is pieces, little pieces of tree branch, and they got little copper points in them too. And then another thing that I use once in a while is just plain old antler tines, and, and these are all pressure flakers. And uh, we'll get into that. And I'll show you what they are. And I've got many other ones too. Um, another thing that you need that I use all the time when you're pressure flaking, like so, is a hand pad. And, and the whole idea of a hand pad is that you could take like a piece of flint like this, put it on your pad, take your pressure flaker, and pressure flake a, pe a piece off. And there you go, it leaves a nice big flake. But we'll get into that later. So that's what a hand pad's used for. And I have many different kinds of these too. Uh, I got this one, I got this one. This one's for if I want to take a nice wide flake. It's narrow at the front and then it's got a nice wide thing on the thing. This one here is the one I use the most. Um, this one here is a little bit opposite of the one you just see. It's got like that. And this is so I could, if I got a big point, I can lay it across here and I can take a couple small flakes at a time on it. And uh, I really don't use that very much. And this is another type of hand pad that I really don't even use this at all. It's, it's supposed to be able to strap on your wrist or on your hand like so, but I, I don't use it. Um, not that it's not any good, because probably for somebody it would. And then another, another, another type of hand pad is just a piece of leather. This is the most common one for if you're uh, um, trying to do like abo stuff, because, you know, stuff like that. Uh, another thing that you'll need to get started is is uh, some kind of boppers. And these boppers here are all either solid copper or copper with a, wo with a wooden handle. And these copper tips also have lead in the end of them. So they're kind of weight forward, the wooden handled ones. And they come in all kinds of different sizes too. And then I, I also have one that's just a piece of bone antler that I use for some sometimes and uh, if you really want to go on the cheap and you don't want to make boppers or buy boppers you can always just got, find yourself a couple nice rocks this is actually one of my favorite ones to use and uh, you know they work just as well these also work great for grinders and abraders and stuff like that and you could also buy an abrading stone and that's used for for setting up platforms and stuff when you when you get an edge done you, you abrade it and 
then you can uh, go ahead and nap the edge and we'll get into that later on down the road. A um, couple other things that you will need is a file to uh, sharpen your uh, pressure flakers and stuff and I always keep a rag in my bucket because sooner or later you're going to cut your hand and it's nice to have a rag because you don't always want to reach for a band-aid and uh, that is about it. Prior safety glasses obviously is another thing that you you, you will want to have is a pair of safety glasses and um, when you are flint napping you want to wear work boots and you want to wear long pants. You don't want to be uh, getting chips down your shoes and stuff because I have actually napped in shorts before where I, I'd been doing something and I got bored decided to nap something real quick and I just sat down and started napping and about two years ago I got a, a chip a clear glass chip I was napping plain clear glass and a chip went down my shoe and I didn't realize it and I got up and walked into the house and before I got to the house I realized that I drove that chip up into my foot and it's been two years now and it's still in my foot and since it's clear glass I haven't been able to get it out I haven't been able to find it so uh, that's something to remember you know don't don't nap in uh, um, shoes with that you're gonna get chips down wear long pants and stuff like that um, the only other thing you need is material to nap, and I'll show you some of that stuff here in a minute. I'll be right back with you. Okay, guys, so um, one of the other things you need is material to nap, and it, there's several different kinds. There's flint, there's chert, there's obsidian, there's agates, there's, there's a million different kinds of rock to uh, nap. There's plain old glass will nap fine. Um, there's just there's just a ton of different kinds. You, you actually you need to get online and get a hold of a couple of good nappers, then they can give you names of people that sell rock. And I mean, it depends on the grades of rock you get. And beginner nappers, they usually sell what they call a beginner's grade rock, which is uh, a little easier to work with, and you know it gets you going in the right direction. We'll put it that way. Um, this right here is just. A nice big piece of uh, chert and uh, you know this this is this is a nodule of chert um, somebody took a flake off of it the rest of it all has the chalky cortex on it it's not, it doesn't all come like this either um, sometimes it's just straight chert and uh, like Flint Ridge chert is just plain chert they, they dig it out of the ground and um, most of it gets heat treated some of it can be napped raw it depends on the grade they're getting at um, this is a piece of obsidian. Uh, some of your nappers will actually spall the obsidian out into a spall like this. And uh, that's kind of nice for beginners because then you know you're getting a piece of flint that is relatively perfect to, to nap. I mean, as far as it doesn't have any cracks because most nappers won't sell stuff that they think is going to break in half the first time you hit it. And, uh, you know. So if you're a beginner, um, spalls are something worth looking into because when you're a beginner, you could take lots of nodules and turn them into scrap real quick. Whereas a spall, it's actually about half done for you. Well, not quite half, but it gets you going. We'll put it that way. Um, but if, if you want to go on the cheap, on the real cheap, and you're just a beginner, um, another good thing to use is the bottoms of bottles, glass bottles. This is the bottom of an old Clorox bottle. This is the bottom of just a small little bottle, another bottle bottom. Um, we've got an old scrap pit around here and an uh, old bottle pit. And you can, neat thing about the glass is you can get all kinds of different colors and it's free. So it gives you something to uh, practice on without costing any money because you will go through some stone when you first begin. And you'll probably make scrap out of most all of it. So that's something to remember. So, uh, you know, that's that's it for uh, this video. I just wanted to show you guys the... Oh, one more thing I wanted to go over. Um, you'll hear a lot of different flint nappers talk about regular flint napping and then abo flint napping. And abo flint napping is 
people that only use bone and antler and stone and all the very traditional traditional stuff an abo flint napper won't use copper because most of them say that you know copper wasn't around at the time that's debatable because some people say copper was around at the time a little bit and some people say they don't but a true abo flint napper usually doesn't use copper also um but like i said that's kind of debatable too so anyways so that's the difference between abo and traditional flint napping um modern flint napping i should say uh so i'm gonna end this video here if you like it like subscribe and share and this is going to be the beginning of a uh, small flint napping series for beginners because uh like i said it's been about a year since i flint napped anything so i'm kind of a beginner again so we're just going to start right from the beginning and go through this together so anyways and uh just to let you know like all the tools that you saw here i only used a couple different one of them and this right here is a point that I just did this afternoon and uh, I kind of did that just to uh, get myself freshened up a little bit and uh, wanted to start this this little small video series so okay I'm gonna leave you there and say thank you